Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back for another video. And today we're going to be reacting to the Australian voting system and taking a look at how the electoral process transpires. Um, I don't know, by yearly, by whatever the case may be. I don't even know how often you guys vote. Um, and yeah, this should be a really interesting video. You guys know we have a very specific voting system in the United States. We have two really big parties and not much else. If you're not in one of those parties, like myself, then you're kind of left out. You can't vote in the primaries. You can't. It's just, it is what it is. But anyways, we're going to be looking at what's it, what's it like in Australia. Now, in the past, we've reacted to some videos, and the general sentiment was that voting isn't taken as seriously in Australia, and not necessarily voting, but politicians. Politicians aren't taken as seriously. There's general mistrust in politicians in Australia and that's something that resonated with me and something I very much agree with so that got me really excited about you know politics in Australia and what that may be like so let's see what the elections are like hit the like button hit the subscribe button recommend some more videos for me to check out down below and let's get right into it stop listening to your dad when he tells you that if you vote for a minor party you're throwing your vote away it's not how the Australian electoral system works at all let me explain. It's Voting 101 for 2022 with Matilda Bosley from The Guardian, Australia. Lots of people's first exposure to how voting works comes from TV shows, often from the US and UK. But there are heaps of differences between how elections over there work versus here in Australia. Perhaps the most important difference is that we use a preferential voting system and those guys use first past the post. It's easiest to explain what this actually means by comparing these two ways of voting. So in first past the post elections, you cast your vote for the one candidate that you most want to win. Whoever gets the most votes gets elected. Simple. But there are some problems with that. Okay, so let's say you're voting in a lower house electorate and one of the huge election issues is public transport. There are three candidates. Two of them want to build a train station and the other one thinks that a ferry terminal would be way better. In the community, there are actually way more train loving voters, but oh no, their votes have been split and the ferry party gets in. Let's look at the same situation with a preferential system. Here, you don't just tick a box, you write numbers from one to, in this case, three, in the order of who you most want to win. They are your preferences. Now, the first- Okay, I kind of see where this is going. We'll, we'll watch the rest of this before I make any <laughs> claims or anything, but I definitely see the disadvantage of the first to the post or whatever it was, which is what we have as well. You got two candidates. Um, for the president, usually the main Republican candidate and the main Democrat candidate in the past election, Joe Biden, Donald Trump. And if you don't like either of those people, who do you vote for? You vote for someone in the Green Party? You vote for, uh, you know what I mean? It's like, and if even if you do, what if you don't like either of them that much, which is what a lot of Americans faced with. There were some polls and no one really liked either of them that much, unless, uh, aside for the people on the extreme sides. Personally, I wasn't even allowed to vote last election. Missed it by just a little bit because my birthday is, uh, you have to turn 18 before that. But yeah, it's, I, I agree. The preferential voting seems a, a bit better in my opinion so far, but let's watch the rest of this. Round looks the same. Everyone's grouped next to their first preference. But wait, no candidate has the majority of the votes. No one has more than 50%. So that means we go to a second round. Locomotive Lovers has the least number of votes. So let's take them out of the running and all their supporters will now have their number two preference. Oh, okay. All of a sudden, train time has more than 50%. So they win that seat. Of course, in a real election, there would be way more candidates and way more rounds and way more election issues. But basically this preferential voting system makes it a lot less risky to vote for a minor party or an independent candidate as your vote will never be just 
thrown away. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about how to figure out what order you want your preferences to actually be in. In the real world, it's worth remembering that Labor and the Liberal National Coalition are by far the most dominant party. So in most electorates, eventually it will come down to a competition between the two of them. If either of these guys are your favourite... What we need to watch is a video that breaks down the different parties in Australia, what those parties are advocating for, and who generally supports those parties. Because I... It's Labor and Liberal are the two main ones this lady's saying, but what about all the other ones? I'm curious about those. So if anyone has a good video that breaks them down, send it to me. I'll watch it for sure. If not, I'll try and find something. Usually it will come down to a competition between the two of them. If either of these guys are your favorite, easy peasy. Just put a one next to their name before numbering all the other candidates in order of your preference. If you do want to vote for a minor party, but still have a preference of if you prefer a Labour government or a Liberal National Coalition government, just put whoever you like as number one and then make sure you eventually put your preferred big boy party before the other. If it does come down to it, your vote for them will count for just as much. Oh, oh, there's one more thing I need to tell you. When you go to the polling booth, all of the parties are going to hand you a leaflet that tells you how to vote for them. This card will show you the order they want you to put your preferences in that will give them the best chance of winning the seat. But it's important to note that you do not have to follow these recommendations at all. But if you really like that candidate or that party, sticking to their order does tend to help them the most. Basically, just go with your gut. <laughs> I, lo I love the ending. Just go with your gut. See, and and she's definitely Australian. That's just, I feel like we need to adopt that because it, it seems like it's life or death over here. Who you vote for, <laughs> it's life or death for some. And then some people are so discouraged to the point where they're not even going to exercise their right to vote. Personally, <coughs> regardless about how I feel of the candidates, candidates, what the hell, I have to put someone on the ballot. I have to go out and vote because people in other countries die. Die. They literally die. They get killed by their arm, the government or whatever the case just to have a voice, just to try and protest having a right to vote, having freedom of speech, like all types of things like that that we take for granted in the United States. And you just have millions and millions of people who don't even like go out and vote. Like I get it, you might have work or something, but there's early voting. I mean, they make it so it, you can fit it around any schedule to go out and vote. It takes 15, 20 minutes. I've never understood why people don't vote. Um, but yeah, that was a really interesting video. From what surface level from this video, from what it seems like, again, make me let me make me aware if uh, that was not presented correctly or if there's another video we need to watch that gives a better uh, look into what Australian elections are like and voting is like. Based on that video, preferential voting seems a lot and a lot better than the system we have. Because that's exactly what it feels like. It feels like your vote is being completely thrown away without preferential voting. So that's how I feel about it. Let me know what you guys think about your voting system and elections. We're definitely going to do a video on the different political parties. Again, don't want to get too political on this channel because you guys are bombarded with that every day. There's a lot more interesting and fun things to check out than just politics. But, you know, you definitely have to learn about the place and see what the uh, the politics are like because that's a plays a big role in your everyday life. Anyways, guys, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.